Good afternoon. If there was a manual for sheriffs and police chiefs, it would say, I hope you never have to do this. Uh, but here we are, so I'd ask you to bear with me. Daniel McCartney started his career as a peace officer in Washington State with the Hoquiam Police Department on April 1st, 2009. I gave him the choice of another date, but starting on April Fool's Day didn't seem to bother him in the least. There's a serious photo of Daniel with a stern face taken soon after we changed uniforms from light blue to dark blue, and I think Daniel would want us to see him that way, all serious and all business. But we know better. For those that knew him and for all of us at Hoquiam PD, we see Daniel with an ear-to-ear -ear infectious smile and sparkle in his crystal blue eyes. With a shock of red locks, and the occasional extra spiked hairdo when he thought I wasn't looking. Daniel quickly became a member of our family at HPD. With only 18 sworn officers in our department, your patrol squad becomes your family away from home, 12 hours a day, three days on, three days off, week after week, and month after month. Daniel and his family lived in a small neighborhood in Montesano, surrounded by other Hoquiam officers, as well as peace officers from around the harbor. We used to call it the Hoquiam East Precinct. Daniel was smart, a part of our small pond. During his time at HPD, Daniel was always going 110%. He was a patrol officer who never sat still. He quickly aspired to additional collateral duties, including bike patrol, field training officer, and he was a member of the Aberdeen Regional Crisis Response Team, and he was our computer network administrator, although I think that last task was somewhat by default due to his wicked computer skills. Daniel earned the nickname of Danimal because he was a red-haired bulldog who kept digging and digging. He, put, he was a part of the team, but he often liked to be in the lead. Daniel's drive and competitive nature sometimes even seemed cocky at times. Really drove everyone else in the department to step up, to do better. We sometimes called him Dan the Man. Daniel also embraced his role as a guardian of our community a role model. He treated others with respect even when, they didn't ha when he didn't have to. Sergeant Mitchell, his, one of his squad sergeants, related Daniel's dismay when he once lost his temper with the suspect and swore at the suspect. To the rest of the squad, the suspect was being a jerk and figured he probably had it coming. But to Daniel, he was disappointed in himself because that's just not how he treated other people. Daniel participated with Shop with the Cop. He read books to kids at the library. He taught bike safety at the annual Central Elementary Bike Rodeo. And he visited with citizens at National Night Out. These assignments he took with the same zeal and dedication as he did his patrol duties. Dan the man. Daniel drove himself to make a big ripple in a small pond every day. Liz Yates of Consistent Cups Espresso first met Daniel when he worked briefly at Staples. I'm assuming he was one of the geek squad there with those wicked computer skills. Liz was opening her business and had some menus printed. Daniel promised to come by, and he actually did. After Daniel started at HPD, he came by every day to get his espresso in Aberdeen on his way into work or to pick up one for his wife, Sierra, on his way home. Liz even remembers their drinks to this day. When Liz opened her second location in Hoquiam, Daniel was even more excited than she was. With a loud whoop, yeah, at the window, Daniel was there six minutes after she opened her new location to graduate Liz, and I'm figuring probably order his coffee for the day. Over the years, they shared family stories of children of the same age, new kids on the way, and the birth of little ones to each of their families. Daniel just didn't talk about his love for his wife and his boys. He showed it every single day, one cup of coffee at a time. Liz also had the comfort of knowing Daniel kept an extra close eye on the coffee stand after hours because any sort of burglary would have created a serious crimp in his coffee habit. <laughs> Even after Daniel transferred to Pierce County Sheriff's Office a little over three years ago and moved to Yelm, he still kept in touch with his friends at HPD and he stopped in for the occasional espresso. The phone call came in the middle of the night. A Pierce County Sheriff's deputy was in a shooting. The deputy is in surgery. The deputy is Daniel. Then the second phone call came. Daniel didn't make it. All of our hearts stopped. We were devastated. 
When Liz heard of the news of a deputy killed in the line of duty in Pierce County, it was sad. So far away in another place, in another pond. But when she learned that deputy was Daniel, her heart stopped. She was devastated. Over the past week, our community came together by the hundreds to honor Daniel and his family. This was repeated all over the region, from Pierce County to Yelm CrossFit. Cards and flowers, tears and hugs, stories and remembrances. Because Daniel McCartney, son, brother, husband, father, and peace officer, made so many big ripples in so many ponds. If you look around you right now, you'll see all of Daniel McCartney's small ponds have come together here today to honor his life. As we go forward, just as our department has honored the family of Officer Donald Burke, killed in the line of duty in Hokwim in 1980, whose daughter Kelly is here today to pay her respects to Daniel, Sierra and the boys will forever be a part of the Hokwim PD family. No matter what years pass, the sacrifice Daniel has made as a peace officer to lay down his life in the protection of his fellow citizen will not be forgotten. But as time moves on and the shock of that night fades in the collective memory of society, I beg all of us to please remember that the sacrifice was made not just by Daniel, but the sacrifice continues every single day as Sierra and their three little boys, Titus, Tate, and Traxton, are forced to live without him. Perhaps no one can change the whole world, but I think Daniel understood he could make a big ripple in a small pond. Whether we realize it or not, all those small ponds are connected to each other, as evidenced by each of you here today. I think Daniel's legacy would challenge us to go forward in our lives and to be that big ripple. <laughs>